What is up everybody, Logan here coming at you guys with another video and today we're going to go over um, how I made about $3,700 in credit collected in the last two trading days. Now we've had short weeks the last two weeks, that's why I've been absent, I've been traveling, uh, just haven't been uploading as much but I'm back on that grind, uh, you guys already know but just started getting back into trading a little bit more because the short weeks are harder. One thing before I get into this video, if you guys could leave a like below and then also comment um, let's comment something fun, maybe something yellow or blue, because tonight we're going to be repping Michigan versus Washington. We got a big game. Uh, I got about five grand bet on Michigan so far already. So we'll see if that gets more or less as the day goes on. If I'm like, maybe I should cash some of this out, but, uh, I'm excited for the game either way, but getting into this video, 10 contracts, two contracts, 10 contracts, two contracts, they're vertical roll orders. So what I like to do instead of just like closing a trade and reopening a new one is just rolling it into the new position. I'm a big fan of that 4,700 level. If we go over to my charts over here, right, you can see down here we were dropping around 4,682. I mean, if we zoom in even more, right, or sorry, we're going to zoom out first and then we'll zoom in. Look at all the short-term time frames. granted, except for the 90-day one hour, um, that one's been, you know, we, we kind of ran up, touched the nosebleeds on that one and pulled back to the mean, but these are two really prime setups. If we're looking at very short-term trading where it's like, you know, your here's your mean over the time frame on the 20 day, here's your mean at 4736. After you see a move of 120 points in one direction with really no counter trend move, right? Like these, you had a couple counter trend moves, like where we're zipping up back the other week and then fell 100 points in a day, right? Or 80 points that day, you know, and you're getting some counter trends, but this was a clear downtrend with no, no way we were breaking back above my little green line here. And then we finally did it Friday a little bit, got pushed back under and then broke out of it again today. So I didn't mind playing a little bit closer. Like at, in total, I have about 13 grand at risk, um, basically trying for like that two grand a day and I'm looking to see if I can get some call credit spreads if we continue to push up towards this like 47.25 zone today. I'm going to add some call credits, try to claw another like five to 600 bucks. You know, but for me, looking at this strategy and these ideas for trading in these short terms, me getting a little bit closer, you know, I don't mind being close when you have a level like 4,700. Right. And if we click over to the Discord real quick, here's my PL from last year for the amplified trades. The link is below down in the description if you guys would like to come trade with us. Um, but these two trades are different from the amplified ones. I did want to say that. Just these two I've been kind of messing with. Currently, right, like I just started my six month trading program and I'm going to be posting my ES levels here. And this is already closed for everybody who already joined up. But I'm going to be posting my levels throughout here. So today I'm watching 47.55. And then for the downside, I'm watching 47.30 and 47.18. And if we lose those, then we're going to keep dropping down and I would have to manage my trades. A couple of reasons why I liked being more bullish here, though, like I said, so much of it has to do with down here. With whenever the market on my standard deviated charts gets way down here in the short term, like I'll even zoom in on this guy, right? Like if I zoom back out, we rode the top of the wave. All the way rode this yellow line basically sent for the last, you know, two weeks, came back to the mean, sat around it, headed back up. And now we start to come to the bottom side of the standard deviated charts. This to me is like the best setup you get. And same with back here, right? When we're at like 4,500. You can keep selling these put credit spreads, let the market do what it wants to do, you know, try to not get caught up in these spots. But when you're up in the yellow line, you should be looking for more call credits anyway, um, and put credits down here. So like, that's my entire thing. And if we ever get back to like 4,600, I would be just getting super aggressive on the put side, maybe going 20 days out and trying to collect like 30 to 40% on my collateral. So, you know, that's two things that I'm looking at. And right now, like I said, I'm watching for that 4,725, right? Because what this is going to uh, give me the chance to do is open some call credits, or I can close those put credits out too, which we've been collecting on that premium all morning because we're up 10 points since I even did those vertical rolls. And we got about 25 points of runway on those as well. Here's the weekly EM, uh, 60 points. We closed at 46.97 on Friday. And then this is the EM for today. 
Um, and right now, right, like that EM high is 47.20. So anything like 47.20, 47.25 ish, um, I'm going to start looking at slapping those call credit spreads on because then the expected move is kind of walking me through this trade versus just saying, hey, I trust the price levels here and the price action. We flip back to the levels. There's that 47.55 again. We clip, click down here, right? I'll go to ES. I'll show you guys some of the ES levels as well. Actually, we'll zoom out. Um, but I posted that level. And so far, we're just a couple points off for the upside trade. So you guys know I'm not very directional as a person. Um, I'm more of like a price level guy and then also the expected move. So, you know, yeah, I have a really great track record with a lot of my trades, but you also have to remember um, for anybody who's watching this is like, I, where a lot of people are like, do research, do research, do research on your trades. I prefer to just listen to the market internals, which is the advanced decline, understand volatility movement. And that could just be volatility reduction and how that um, compares to options pricing because the market's priced in really properly, right? That's a tongue twister if you say it fast. But um, with that pricing, I really want to lean on, right? Our levels or so ES levels, we're almost there. Here's 4730 if you're like, how'd you get that level? Here's where all the recent volume and action was. And then where'd you get your 4718 from? Down here, this candle wick. And then this was my other level, right? We're up around this area. And then I also like to give out like, you know, a couple points above because there's a lot of fake breakouts and fake breakdowns in this market, honestly, more than ever, if that's just the new market. But we have so many failed breakouts and breakdowns where, you know, you'll start to hit a level where you're thinking it's going to break out and then it fails like back here, right? Like failed breakout the second we start to get up here and then we come all the way back down. This could be another one here where you're setting up right over a price level or something you're watching it breaks through it and then you get in and the market immediately reverses. So for me, right, I like to kind of keep that in mind as I'm putting these trades on, collecting that premium because my trading goal honestly is to make like, if I make six G's a week, like I'm happy with that. You know, six G's a week's roughly my goal. Uh, some weeks I don't make any money when I do these type of day trades, right? Because I'll have like three really good days, two bad days. Um, which for me, it's like totally okay though. Cause I have my amplified trades aside from this. And my whole idea is to just continue to build wealth over time. I'm not interested in trying to make a lot of money really quickly. I'm not interested in any, well, except if it's the Michigan money line against Washington tonight, that only takes three hours <laughs> if they can do it. I'm just, that's all I've been thinking about all day. But so that's kind of my breakdown on these trades. Like I try to understand that volatility pricing around here and keep track of the VIX. 13.5 was one of my levels I called out last week. Um, honestly, back when we were back here on 14 and the volatility did drop uh, before the market went back up. So that was also another like telltale sign that, hey, the market's probably going to have a green day here. We also had a lot of red days last week. We spend three to five days red and then we get a counter green day or two. So you know, the setup was just there for the, some put credit spreads. Amplified grabbed some as well way down here, uh, which was awesome. But I'm just waiting, right? Here's that old resistance back here, right around my old level I called out. So just listening to those ES price levels is so important and understanding where our supply and demand is because then you can continue to put on trades and I'm just collecting money, you know, as we sit here and then I can put on a call credit spread. So if the market reverses against me, I can collect on the other side um, and just continue to do this. But, you know, as far as like people who have jobs and want to do this, it's a little harder. Uh, I find that it's a lot easier to do longer term expirations with options. Um, if you're somebody who's like, hey, Logan, I work, you know, nine to five, but I want to trade and I want to do short term options because I feel like it could help me out. Yeah, like, that's a really good point that you make, right? And for me, you know, and when I was in that situation where I didn't have as much time in the day, I found that I had to go to longer dated expirations. But now that I'm able to, you know, really sit in front of my computer all day, make YouTube videos for you guys, and then also spend a lot of my days um, just trading, that it just gives me that freedom and that option to, hey, 
you know, I'm going to spend some time testing out some short term stuff as we come into my ES price level, which is cool, which is really just a very simple, like I said, I, I think this, I don't want to be like, oh, I know the levels, but if you just look back here at the supply and demand, right? Like this to me is very important. And then back here with a couple of these wicks around that 4718 area, I mean, some people could say, hey, 4720, others could say down here at 4700. I mean, yeah, that was a pretty solid retake overnight, but we're coming back into this zone. And then back here, you know, support and resistance acts like a zone. It's not a specific number, but hey, look out for 47, you know, you could say 4760 because that's the top of this wick and be off by a couple points and you still were right on that call because the market's heavily algo driven anyway. And who knows where all the algos are set up. I know I don't know exactly where all the time. So yeah, pretty cool. Pretty cool stuff going on. Uh, but dude, I, I love trading the markets. It's so fun uh, either way, right? But this setup, I mean, we're getting this clear breakout here, um, trying to come back up. But I would say like 4,800 on the ES would be the next stop unless we begin to fail even more. But 4,720, so we're coming into my CCS um, range. I'm going to wait for 4725 and then probably slap some CCSs on for tomorrow. The EM is going to be about 30 it looks like, maybe 28 at the end of the day, and then I'm just going to continue to collect that premium. Um one thing I wish I, I wish I did was get closer than 4695 for my shorts, but 4700 was also like, you know, there we've had so much price action stick right there. That I was like, "Oh, I should probably go you know, five points under and then make these 10 wide to just collect more premium. But that's going to be everything for me. I hope you guys appreciated this video. If you did leave a like, a comment below. If you have yet to subscribe, I'd really appreciate that. But that's going to be everything for me. And I will see you guys in the next video.